Mm, what's my favorite water? Fuji. <laughs> my name is Kenny Leon and I am the director. Um, you know, I approach all revivals uh, the same. It's like when I did Fences on Broadway with Denzel Washington and when I did uh, the other revivals I've worked on, I approach them like they are new plays, brand new plays. So I sense what's the, what's the temperature in the country and I think about what I want to leave this present day audience with. So it's a new play. What's the temperature? It's, uh, what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's hot all over the country, all over the world. And it's important to hit on the theme of people not listening to each other. So above everything, this is a play about love, but it's also about uh, what strengthens the love is we got to listen to each other. And we're, we're just not doing that. So I, in that sense, I think it's a very universal play. What's wonderful, what's really wonderful about this production is unlike the play in 1980, uh, which was all white Americans uh, doing all of the roles, this production is cast uh, multiracially. So Sarah is being played by an African American. Uh, the lawyer is being played by a Korean American. Uh, of course, Joshua Jackson is Anglo-American. So it's a mixture of people. Uh, Sarah's daughter is a black woman. And I think in casting the play that way, it allows it to operate on many, many different levels. So there will be windows and doors for our audience members to meet the play um, where they come in. And so some, of, some people will see this play through the eyes of a mother. Some would see it through the eyes of a daughter. Some would see it through the eyes of an American. Some would see it through the eyes of just a person living on the planet. So, uh, and I think the play is a very funny, funny play. So it was a funny, rich, lovely, beautiful love story about love and love of country. Revival means that a play has stood the test of time. Uh, Death of a Salesman, a Raising in the Sun, Long Day's Journey into Night, those plays uh, um, survive over time. That means another generation gets to tell this story in their way. So this revival means we get to tell it now. Uh, I get to tell it with this group of artists. We get a chance to tell the story and see how it affects our world today. Oh man, my creative process is always the same. I'm always trying to discover truth. I'm trying to lead the actors to a place where they all can operate in the same, in the same world. But uh, I, I'm a stronger director because of this specific play. Because in, a, in my rehearsal room, I have, what, three interpreters. I have three actors who are deaf. I have hearing actors. I have uh, all the different racial makeup in the room. So, uh, and on the first day of rehearsal, I say to everyone, you know, let's not walk on eggshells. Let's ask the questions we want to ask of each other so we grow together. If someone says that you, you have offended me, then you have to accept that and say, I'm sorry, and then we move on and we grow and learn from each other like that. But it's a, in, in many ways, the process of working on the play is far more exciting than actually doing the play because I'm growing as a person. I'm learning from everybody in the room. So it's a very exciting rehearsal room. You, you have to learn how to communicate differently, but you know, in whatever play I'm doing, even if it's, it's all hearing actors, I'm still trying to figure out how those uh, group of actors process information and all human beings process differently. So as a director, I have to figure out how to get to this person. This person may be a quiet person. This may per be a person that needs to be motivated and pushed. So I'm always trying to figure out how they take in information. And with this uh, production, at least, I know the challenges with almost everyone in the room. So I have to use different skill set to help communicate. And uh, Lauren, who's playing Sarah, she was my ASL teacher, you know, before I knew I was going to cast her in the show, you know, because she's not a professional actress. So it's out of her teaching me ASL that 
I sort of figured like, wow, this woman could do the role. So initially she was my teacher and now I'm her teacher. So it's kind of uh, scary and it's kind of exciting as well. Uh, I think what makes this production special is just our time. It's like the, the play has caught up with our time so it will have a different meaning to audiences today. Forty years ago, it was just about introducing the hearing world to the challenges of the deaf world. Uh, today, when we do this play, it's a universal theme about how we all play like we're God and try to make each other over in our image. And we try to pass that off as uh, communication. It's like we don't really listen to each other. We just try to get people to agree with us or to you know, to be the embodiment of what's in our mind. So it's more than that play that introduces the hearing world to the deaf world. It's a play about how we're all, you know, we kind of, we sort of need each other. And the more we don't recognize that, we leave a lot of beauty on the peripheral. I want to see revivals because those are plays that have stood the test of time. But I don't want to see a play that's reminding me what it was like 40 or 50 years ago. I want a play that impacts me today. And you know, time changes, but people pretty much stay the same. We have the same sort of challenges, you know. And I'm hoping one day, you know, we'll figure it out, like what it really means to be a decent human being. And we're still figuring out how to be respectful of each other how to live on the planet together, and some of the great works of art, some of these wonderful plays, to sort of find ways to help us articulate that in different ways. So I'm interested in revivals that speak to the time we're living in, even though they were written 40, 50, 100 years ago. I think that's really power. That really shows us, like, you know, problems are not new. So I would rather call plays that have survived 100, 200 years. I would rather call them the classical plays, the classical work. Uh, they're in the repertoire, but they're not revivals. Revival sounds like you're digging something up that you really, you know, that's, it feels old. And I like things that are fresh or that speaks to me now. I'm speaking to live bodies in the theater. The, the, the audience is breathing the same air as the performers. So it's the ultimate form of 3D. And so you don't want it to feel like a revival. You want it to feel like now. What does this have to do with my life now? What does this say to me today? How can I walk out of this theater today and, and be inspired by something that was said on this stage? So when I do uh, a play like Children of a Lesser God, my hope is that you go home and you think about how you're treating your family, or you, or, or you think about how you're not listening to your daughter or your son, or you think about your father who lives 50, year, 50 miles away from you and you haven't spoken to him in years. You think about that. So I'm trying to impact lives today. I'm trying to uh, have audience members go out and make a difference in the world now. It's not just about putting, stage, putting stuff on the stage for audience to look at. That's not great theater. Great theater is when audience engage with the story. So I know you can't help but have the um, fucking TED talk in your mind. And that's good, that serves a purpose. So I need you to like work really hard to like put it over here. You know what I mean? Um, that's all, that's because I know that. And I know that's important, but it's like, that'll take care of itself. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be fun. But that's at 3.30. Okay? Uh, any questions about this scene? The, the goal is to keep finding each other's eyes. Yeah. So, I'm not gonna believe it if there's a disconnect. I'm not gonna, you know, believe it, so we gotta find the trust. So just continue our finding each other's eye. And they never did they. Who is they? I need to see here, I need to see her here. Who is they? Okay. But that was that was great. Yes. There's more trust, right? 
more trust, right? Because you went there and looked back and he was there. I felt that, that was good. So that, keep doing more of that.